to my YouTube channel. My name is Naya J. And if you're here to stay, give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're here to go, like it anyway, because it's going to, this word is going to bless you too. But I'm just going to give you guys the part two of the rainbow word, prophetic word that I have for you guys. For the first prophetic word, I told you guys that if you're in a season of isolation, then it's your preparation. That your uh, preparation is not punishment, but it's your protection, right? Your secret place is your protection, right? And I was in the book of Hosea, and I want to go back for a second, because this is also going to help you for today's part two. It's a three-part word. But Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 through 16, God talks about the adulterous woman, okay? She idolized sex. She idolized her riches. She idolized everything that was in front of her, right? So God says, after taking and stripping her of every single thing that she had, bringing her to rock bottom, right? He then allured her into the wilderness and spoke tenderly to her. Then he gave her back her vineyards, which is everything that he took from her for her to realize that God was all that she needed, right? He then makes a covenant with her and love, compassion, righteousness, justice, and faithfulness. God loves you enough to take everything from you. So, okay, so that was in the word number one. But how does that correlate to word number two? How that correlates to this word right here is because what's in front of you is affecting how you see the world. Your love for people, places, and things, your pride, your attitude, your idols, everything that is in front of you right now is affecting how you are seeing the world. It's almost as if you've been living in some kind of delusion and you've been going in cycles over and over again. What's in front of you, God had to remove what was directly in front of you because what was in front of you was blinding you. You understand? You were so blinded by what you had directly in front of you. Your love for somebody was blinding you. Your own pride was blinding you. Your own addictions were blinding you. You were so blinded by these things that you could not see the road in front of you. You could not see where you were going. You could not see where Holy Spirit was taking you because what was in front of you was affecting your vision. God says he wants to give you a new vision. God says he wants to give you a new sight. But in order for you to see the road in front of you, he has to remove the roadblocks. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In order for you to see where God is trying to take you, he has to take the things from in front of you that you're focused on that has nothing to do with your purpose. He has to remove the things that are in front of you that have nothing to do with your destiny in Jesus' name. What's in front of you was blocking you from seeing the blessings that was to come. What was in front of you was blocking you from seeing the traps that the enemy has set for you. So because God loves you, he removed everything from your life. He stripped you of everything. Yes, God took everything from you. And yes, you are in a season of wilderness. And yes, your preparation is your protection. But you love these things so much. And the reason why it hurts so bad when God took these things from you is because you made an idol out of them. You put these things in the position of God. You put these things in God's position in your life. And you put God at a lower position. God, for one, is a jealous God. You put no gods before him. The low G, you understand? So because you put these things in God's position, when you lost these things, it felt as if you had lost God. That is a death that you never want to experience. The people who are in hell have lost God. The people who are in hell don't have God. The people who are in hell can't feel God's presence. You are wondering why you can't hear God talking to you. You're wondering why you can't hear God speaking to you. You're wondering why you can't feel God's presence. You're wondering why you have not been seeing God move. But the reason why you can't hear him is because everything is blocked. The reason why you can't see him is because your vision is blocked. The reason why you can't move forward and progress and get to where you're trying to get to, you keep starting all these businesses and relationships and it seems that these businesses and relationships keep failing. You cannot go ahead and you can't get forward because the things that are in front of you are blocking you. The things that are in front of you are stopping you. So God has to take these things out of your way. Get out of your own way. He took you out of your own way, even if he took you from yourself. You're like, God, I don't know who I am, Holy Spirit. God, I feel like I, I'm not who I thought I was. You're right. You're not who you thought that you were because who you thought that you were was not the destiny. Okay. Hmm. Who you thought you were did not line up with who God says you are. Who you thought you should marry does not line up with the purpose and the man or the woman that God put and set out for you, that God made for you. It's not about what you think because you've been moving in what you think. And since you've been moving in what you think, you have been lost and you have been confused. How can you move in what you think when your thoughts are full of confusion? How can you move in what you think when your thoughts are full of, I don't know, maybe? How can you move in what you think when you have a God that knows? Why are you trying to put think in knowledge? at competition with each other? Why are you trying to put guesses and hypothesis against God's infinite knowledge? God's knowledge is infinite. 
And his love for you is so strong that he is willing to strip you butt, butt, ball naked. He's willing to bring you all the way to rock bottom because if you hit rock bottom, there is no way for you to go butt up. If you hit rock bottom, you can't go down no more. He says, good. You hit rock bottom, now come up some. You hit rock bottom, now stand up. You hit rock bottom, now look up. Whatever it is, look up and look forward. You couldn't look up before because what you were putting above you had it. Bye bye, shit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What you were putting above you, what you were putting on a pedestal were idols. You couldn't look ahead of you because what was in front of you were idols. God took those things from you for a reason. You think that God stripping you was him hating you. But the whole time, him stripping you was him loving you. The whole time, him stripping you was because he cared about you. The whole time, him stripping you naked is to save you. Because had you had stayed where you were standing, you would have been going nowhere fast and you would have turned around and been 45 years old and wondering why your life is not where you wanted your life to be. God is saving you. God is helping you. What was in front of you was blocking you from seeing what God has for you. Oh, Holy Spirit. I also read Psalm 57. Psalm 57 verse 1 says, Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me. For I, in you, I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wing until disaster has passed. That means if you are taking refuge in God's wing, under God's wing, God is taking you under his wing. That means God is fighting on your behalf. The shadow of his wings, the shadow is dark. Being put in the dark ain't always bad. Sometimes it's because God is fighting for you. Sometimes darkness is our safety when you are put there by God. You have been thinking that the reason why you are in a dark place is because the enemy put you there. But understand that we all go through darkness, but you're either going to be a grave or you're going to be a seed. You're either going to be stuck down there or you're going to grow and come up. God said, I had to bury you. I had to put you under my wing. I had to keep you in the dark because in darkness is where it is. And darkness is, and darkness is where plants grow. And darkness is how plants thrive. And darkness is where you put the seed. God said, you are a seed. He says, but you're not just a seed. He says, you've been belittling yourself. You think that you're so small. He says, don't forget that faith the size of a mustard seed moves a mountain. He says, there is power in being a seed. He says, there's power in, in seed-sized things. He said, because a seed goes to a tree. He says, a tree grows fruit. And when you grow fruit, you eat for a lifetime. He says, I had to put you in dark areas because you didn't see that you being a small seed meant that you had a big destiny. You couldn't see that you being a small seed meant that you had a lot set in store for you. You couldn't see that being a small seed meant you're going to grow into a tree and produce fruit and veggies for a lifetime. You couldn't see that you as one small seed was going to grow. When the fruit fell off the tree, the other seeds out of those fruits planted themselves in the ground and you went from one tree to 10,000 trees, but you didn't know that you were going to be 10,000 trees because you were so focused on the size. God says the size has nothing to do with the purpose that I put in you. The size has nothing to do with what's going to come out and grow. From you. He says, do it through me. He says, you've been in the dark for so long. You've been in the dark your whole life. He says, do it through me. He says, come through me. He says, come to me. My darkness is not going to hurt you. He says, I'm fighting for you. But I love you so much that while you are in this darkness, I'm watering you. I'm nurturing you. I'm helping you grow. But I had to keep you in the dark because the seed can't grow in the light, plants do. Seeds don't grow in light, trees do. He says, you don't need the light yet. You've been feeling like God has been leaving you in the dark with where your purpose is going. God says, I got this. Let me take care of you. He had to break you down to build you up again. He had to break you down to make you stand tall, stand up. It's time to stand up. It's time to stand up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, y'all, the Holy Spirit has spoken through me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that this video touched somebody, and I know that this video was going to break some chains loose. I know that this video is going to make hell nervous, but I want you to share this video with somebody who you know needs this video. If it's not you, it's the friend and the person connected to you, and if it's not the friend, then it's your mother, but it's somebody connected to you. The people who are connected to you are going to be blessed because of your obedience. The people who are connected to you are going to be blessed because God is revealing himself to you. God 
God is revealing himself, he's proving himself to you. God had to strip everything from you to prove to you that all you need is him. He had to take everything from you so to prove to you that nobody could have done this but God. He had to take everything from you to prove to you that nobody could have elevated me right now but God. He had to make your business go down in shambles so to prove to you that when you become a millionaire, nobody could have did that but God. Hear me. He had to make it hard. He had to make it impossible so that when he does it, you can't say nothing, but can't nobody do this but God. And he gets the glory out of it from you. He did it for you. He gets the glory out of it from you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give this video a like. Make sure you comment and make sure you subscribe. Part three of this world, you think that this world is on fire, y'all. Part three is gonna be sick, okay? You understand me? I, I love you guys so very much. If you would like one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me and you like the fire of God that I have within me, sis, you can check my description down below. I'll put my website, www.ywbok.com. I have 45-minute mentorship, an hour-long mentorship, and I also have a $30 faith course. I teach you guys how to pray. I teach you guys the art of fasting. I teach you guys how to anoint your homes, how to anoint your bodies. I teach you guys how to take communion, why you should take communion, why you should anoint your homes. I teach you guys about all the principalities and demons in hell. I teach you guys how to defeat those demons in hell. It's an interactive course, so I'm talking to you guys throughout the whole course. So it's not like you're reading slides all day. I'm talking to you guys. It's just a bunch of videos of me explaining it. And it's a little bit of reading here and there, but you got this. You got $30 for some Chick-fil-A. You got 30 bucks to help your faces, okay? At the end of the day, I'm just Nia J. You don't gotta listen to a thing I say. Educate so that we don't generate. Malosh generations. Love and light, y'all. Peace!